Welcome back everybody. Today we are discussing one of the most important things and like a must know thing when it comes to CG industry or you can say 3D industry. Uh, today we are discussing about a bump map and displacement map. What are these, how to use them, when to use them, what is the difference between them and which is better, right? So this was actually a request by RG Tech. So he wanted to know how to use these maps. And I've been planning to make this video for a long time because this is like a must know and one of the most key things when it comes to the CG industry. So let's see how we can uh, do this. Uh, now there are a few things that you should know before getting into it. Uh, the first thing is uh, let's try uh, discussing about what is a bump map. Well a bump map is something that fakes a displacement or you can say fakes a depth. Uh, on the other hand a displacement map actually creates a depth or you can say actually displaces your geometry for example if i have a cube around here and if i bring this up and let's say i extrude this to somewhere like this just a little depth right so uh, right now what you see for example if i apply a bump map on it like for example everything is rest is complete white and the black portion is in the middle that will create a fake depth that this has been extruded inside but if i use a displacement map this will actually displace the geometry to go inside and create that actual depth on the other hand this this if i used a bump map a bump map will only create a fake depth that will look like that there is some kind of depth going on obviously there is no depth uh, so the question is which is better uh, well there is no better or you can say right or wrong both are better in their own ways uh, but let's talk about uh, how to use them or when to use them well mostly gaming company use bump maps a lot because they are limited by the polygons for example bump map uh, doesn't require a lot of polygon to actually create those fake depths on the other hand displacement map requires a large amount of uh, subdivisions to create uh, displacement for example if i didn't had this uh, extrusion inset inside i couldn't displace the geometry but for the bump bump doesn't require this extrusion he can just create a fake depth anywhere uh, now uh, the cons about the bump map is a uh, bump doesn't work well with corners if I bevel this for example Let's bevel this and let's keep it somewhere like this All right, so bump cannot process this the corners or edges uh, bump is pretty bad with edges you can say so bump cannot actually process corners. so there is that so there is that negative part of it on the other hand uh, bump doesn't require a lot of geometry for example it doesn't require a lot of you can say edge loops right you don't you don't have to like worry about your geometry on the other hand if you are working with displacement map displacement map are pretty good when it comes to high detailing because it actually displaces your overall geometry but a uh, displacement map do consume a lot of polygons like for example any extrusion requires a segment around uh, the area for displacement map to actually work so a displacement map is pretty good with the you can say geometry and everything uh, but displacement map do requires a lot of you can polygon so it totally depends on what kind of project you're working on for me it's always about what kind of thing i'm working on i use both of them i like both of them obviously it totally depends what kind of stuff you're working on if you are like limited by your polygons you you are limited by like number of polygons that you can only take a couple of them like 10 10 10 division 30 segments then you should probably go for bump map but if you're not limited with your polygon simply go for 100 100 100 like 300 on a simple plane you can definitely go for a displacement map so i think uh, this totally depends on what you're using so today we are going to take a look at how we can use this both of these uh, on different types of object and how to procedurally create this uh, the other thing that you should know about bump and displacement map these maps only work on a gray scale value that means your maps should be always in black and white or gray uh, for them to properly work uh, in any 3d program so there's that they can only read alpha and mat so uh, with that said let's uh, get into it mm, so i have a couple of examples around here if i turn on my cube i have a simple cube with not a lot of divisions actually um, i think uh, yeah four 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 so we have 12 segments so let's see uh, if I go to my camera and uh, let's turn on the IPR. Alright, so as you can see, I have a simple uh, cube going on with, you can see a little bit of uh, 
bump or displacement we can't tell right so let me just close this and show you the hyper shade of this material and how i created this uh, so let's go to the cube material and if i just uh, delete this let me just show you the overall map of this so this is just a simple brush uh, that i've created in photoshop and painted painted on a simple white layer and this is just a black and white image so what i'm going to do is let's look at how to use a bump map first then we'll get into how to use a displacement map so to, to use a bump map simply drag and drop your image on the hyper shade and once you're done with your dropping your image you can also go to arnold and simply take an ai image and load from here if you want uh, once you're done taking your image all you have to do is go to arnold and search for bump and you'll have ai bump 2d and select the 2d and attach this first attach your alpha to the bump map and then as you can see as soon as you attach your uh, image to your bump map you'll see some depth going on and uh, in the bump map node you'll see a bump height and this is basically the overall strength of your whole uh, bump map this will be uh, the thing that will be adjusting your uh, z depth or you can say fake depth if i make it somewhere around one right uh, as you can see this gets even harsher so uh, definitely uh, you know just don't overdo this since bump maps pretty much fix the overall you can say displacement we have to like limit the around depth which it's creating so let's attach this bump map to the normal camera and as soon as you attach this to a normal camera if you go to your hypershade material a stand surface you'll notice in the geometry that it automatically connects to your bump mapping so to connect your bump map to the bump channel all you have to do is uh, select your bump map node and select and connect it to the normal camera and that, there you go so moving on uh, let's see now let's open our ipr and uh, let's see so we have something like this let's pause this i'm going to go to my uh, perspective camera and it's not showing the perspective camera let me just switch it let's just close this refresh it again and there we go so uh, i'm going to get a little closer view to show you how exactly the bump map is acting so if i move a little bit like to the left side as you can see there is no actual depth the bump map is pretty much faking everything and look at this portion the polygons are pretty straight right but uh, the bump map is actually creating those shadows and everything a fake depth around it to create uh, something called as a fake z depth or you can say displacement around it right so let me just turn this off but although it looks pretty good so in some areas bump maps work pretty good and i'm going to go to my main shape now main camera and let's switch back so I think bump map is uh, doing a pretty good job. I mean, I cannot say if it's a displacement or a bump map. I think the depth is looking pretty good on it. And we don't even have a lot of polygons going on. So let's turn this off and let's close this and let's go to the hyper shade and let's see how the displacement works on this. So I'm going to delete this bump channel. And uh, if you look at the output of your stand surface, you have a surface shader, volume shader and displacement shader. All you have to do is select your image and connect the alpha to the displacement shader and that's it you won't see anything uh, on the material viewer but as soon as you get out of your hyper shade and go into the ipr and let's uh, turn this on you'll see something like this right so displacement is working pretty harshly now there are a few things that, sh that you should know when you're working with displacement so the first thing that you should know is uh, selecting your cube and go to the cube shape or your object shape go to the arnold and you have to first of all increase the subdivision right now if i set it to none you'll see something like this so the displacement is kind of not working as it should because there is not enough polygon to actually displace the geometry so instead we have to switch it to cataclasm and cataclasm is just you can say at least like uh, pressing a three on your keyboard just making everything smoother if you just want to increase the subdivision instead of making everything smooth you can choose linear whatever works for you so as you increase the subdivision you'll see more and more polygons going around it so the next thing that you have to understand is going to the dis displacement attributes and turning on the auto bump all right this will just help uh, the displacement map to work perfectly and this is the height the height value is going to be pretty much uh, that's controlling the overall displacement if i make it somewhere around 0.10 and let's pause this let's uh, go to 
the perspective and I'm going to close this tab and open the IPR again to refresh it perfect and if I rotate this now and zoom in as you can see uh, the displacement map is actually displacing the actual geometry I mean it's not creating any fake depth it's actually uh, inserting it inside and completely moving the geometry as the alpha and mat is pushing them along so I think a displacement is also doing a very good job but in this scenario looking at both the renders I think I'll probably go with the bump map because the bump map is doing pretty good job and I don't have to use a lot of polygons as you can see the subdivision has gone uh, the iteration is set to 5 I mean it's like too many segments right but when I'm working with the bump channel I don't have to actually increase it this will also cost me my render times as I said uh, more geometry means more render times less geometry means less render time so I think I'll go with the probably the bump map in this one so let's look at another example and so I have a wine glass and this time what we are going to do is actually create a displacement map with you can say pretty much uh, inside uh, shader so I'm going to close this for now and uh, let's create a new material I'm going to call this wine and I think I'll make this pretty black 0.2 and 0.5 alright so let's go to the hyper shade open this up and we have a normal material so I'm going to go to my annual and simply select my AI noise once you're done selecting your AI noise just uh, manipulate your noise according to you I'm just going to play around with my noise to see what kind of result I want amplitude to probably around 2 maybe yeah and uh, once you're done with this simply go to Arnold and search for bump and I'm going to attach the color to the bump map I need a float so I'm going to go to color to float let's attach this and as you can see we have something going on right about here right so let's select this to a normal camera and right now we as you can see we have some kind of depth let's see this on the IPR and there you go so now as you can see we have pretty nice depth going on so the bump is really working pretty nicely I'll increase the depth just a little bit uh, I think that's too much so I'm going to keep it to probably around 0 0.20 instead of 1.0 and uh, let's uh, go into the noise and I'm going to increase I think let's make the distortion to one yeah I think this is looking good and let's go to the perspective camera and let's close this again and refresh it and let's select the perspective perfect right so now uh, we are into a perspective view and let's see uh, closely how well the depth is working alright so as you can see uh, the depth is looking you can't see actually that it's fake or anything but because the depth is so good I mean the bump is really acting good but you can tell like around the edges like there is no displacement going on around the edges so only the edges are like pretty messed up apart from that the bump is really working good so I think the bump is doing a really great job so let's see how the displacement will work on this so let's close this let's go to the hyper shade and I'm going to delete the bump and come around here and attach this to the displacement sorry and let's go back let's select the IPR and let's keep it the perspective and instantly you'll see something like this and don't worry it's supposed to happen like this I mean uh, right now the displacement value is actually too strong uh, so what we are going to do is go to the shape of your object and first of all switch it to cataclysm to make the subdivision pretty high and the next thing is changing the height value from 1 to probably around 0, 5 and auto bump and just go to the render and just update the full scene uh, and this should fix the problem so as you can see the displacement is working pretty good I think I'm going to lower the value I think that's too low let's make it somewhere around 30 yeah so let's uh, get a closer look so right now uh, the problem that we were having with the bump map uh, we don't have that kind of problem right now 
as you can see. Yeah. So as you can see, if you get a closer look, uh, as you can see, this is actually displacing the geometry, actually creating those, uh, you can say, a displacement around it. Uh, so the displacement, I guess, is working pretty nicely on this uh, Weingler. And uh, I think it's looking really, really good. I mean, the overall effect is pretty nice. And if I go to the main camera i think i have a pretty nice uh, looking render so i can definitely render this out and play around with it to get an interesting look so i think displacement is really working good on this uh, as i said this totally depends on what kind of stuff you're working on uh, now let's look at some other example i'm going to close this and i have another model around here all right uh, yeah so uh, as you can see this is pretty low poly but in the subdivision i have set it to cataclax so this looks pretty uh, smooth out in the render view so let's see how we can do this all right uh, i'm going to create a new material let's call this base and let's make the weight to one and let's make this point 2.5 i think this is good let's close this and go to the hyper shade and I'm going to select the base and uh, let's see uh, what else can we use uh, I mean you can always search for noise or you can pretty much use any black and white textures as I said uh, it should be in grayscale value and let's use a simplex noise I'm going to out the color to the normal camera and uh, I think before connecting it I think I should just just how this is looking so I'm going to make this three and uh, let's increase this okay let's make it pretty harsh so let's make it something like this and uh, we have to attach a bump node so go to Arnold let's attach this to sorry the alpha and the value to the normal camera so now we have something like this and uh, let's see how the render is looking So as you can see the effect is too harsh on this uh, model because you can see the polygons burning out so what you have to do is just turn down the overall value of the grease scale and you'll slowly start to see the effect fading away so it totally depends on if you want the harsh look if you want a pretty you can say subtle look you can just make the grayscale scale value to around gray and if you want a pretty harsh value you can make the complete effect complete black and white so uh, the alpha and matte will decide how much depth there is going to be. So I'm going to make this a little harsher. And let's uh, look at this area. Alright. And let's go to the base geometry. Alright. So as you can see, as I move my, uh, you can say attributes, threshold and gamma, increasing the value, the more kind of effect you're getting. Alright, let's try this with displacement, how this works. I think I'm going to increase the overall uh, scale value. So I think it should like, yeah, all over the model. Make this 8. Okay. So once you're done with this, I think we are going to create a displacement with this now. I'm going to delete the bump node and let's take this noise around here and attach this to the displacement. Once you're done with this, let's open this up and you see something like this which is completely fine because the height value is too high so let's make this something like this and turn on the auto bump and just simply hit update full scene and there you go so uh, let's look at the perspective view So as you can see the depth map is or you can say displacement map or you can say height map is working pretty nicely on this because we can actually see the overall details going around it um, that bump map cannot actually process so I guess uh, displacement map I'll go with displacement map definitely on this one because it's actually displacing the overall geometry 
and giving a really nice look if i increase the overall subdivisions to it it, it will even create a nice or you can say detailed look of the overall model so uh, definitely don't overdo this effect because you have to consider your render time as well if you increase more segments you have to consider render time as well it will just increase more and more time to your renders uh, but you can overall see how this is like looking on your model how the displacement is actually displacing your geometry uh, around the neck so let's look at this so as you can see we have a nice displacement going on and it looks pretty good so uh, this is like uh, uh, let me just hide this model again and uh, let's go to the main camera and let me just close this so this was like uh, doing everything from the inside of the 3d program uh, now we'll take something called a real image a real displacement image of or you can say a cobblestone or a desert and then we'll see how we can use a real image and displace the geometry and create overall uh, you can see nice looking realistic result out of it uh, so let's see I'm going to create a plane now and let's bring this up somewhere around like this and I'm going to make this somewhere around 50 and 50 okay and um, let's go to the outliner I'm going to call this desert and I'm going to create a new material for it Arnold stand surface and I'll call this desert as well and since the desert are not that shiny i'm going to make the specular to zero so uh, let's uh, go to the hyper shade and uh, select the desert and i'm going to bring in my image for the desert so i have two maps around here the first is diffuse which we, which is just a simple color so i'm going to attach this to the base color and the second is displacement uh, now you can also use the displacement map as a bump map as well displacement map is also known as height map uh but yeah whatever you call it so let's select the bump map and select the out value and there we go so the bump is working let's see how well the bump is working and i'm going to select my arnold ipr there we go so i'm going to go to my perspective camera and actually zoom in to see how the desert is actually looking so I don't think the bump is actually working really great in this because I don't see any like uh, the desert waves and those dunes kind of look so I'm going to pause this and let's see how the displacement will work on this uh, let's delete this and uh, simply select your AI standard surface the output and attach the color to the displacement shader and let's go back and hit the IPR and let's turn this on and now as you can see we see something going on uh, the overall displacement of the desert and let's increase the value let's go to a desert shape and let's make the value to somewhere around 0.1 and increase the subdivision level to cataclasm i think i'll make it 0.5 and now as you can see we have a perfect desert looking kind of look going on around here where we can see the overall details of every wave and I think this is looking good. I'm going to turn on the auto bump. So it just helps with your displacement. So as you can see, we have a pretty harsh look after the auto bump. So let's uh, turn the value down to probably around 0 0.05. And uh, I think this should work now. And uh, let's make the value even lower. Since auto bump uh, reads all the pose and everything going around it and uh, I think the value is still pretty high and I think this is good so let's update the full scene and let's increase the value okay so I think now we have a subtle kind of effect going on I'm going to increase the value to even higher just so we see some displacement going on so i think now the displacement is looking good and we have the overall uh, kind of look the uh, desert should have i mean if you think uh, the effect is too low or if you want to increase it you can simply hit 0.2 you can increase the pretty much value and uh, 
I think the result is looking pretty good. So this is how you can actually use an actual displacement map for any images or you can see any uh, image that you get. Uh, there's like a lot of displacement map going around on the internet. You can simply download them and play around with this to get a different kinds of result and definitely play around with this. This is like a must know thing when it comes to CG industry or if you are into 3D, this is something that you should know. Uh, this is like the 101 of getting into 3D so make sure you have a good knowledge about it so i hope you like the video and if you have any question feel free to ask me i'm happy to answer them and i hope this should solve your problem when it comes to displacement map and bump map how to use them when to use them and uh, displacement is also called as the height map uh, in some other 3d programs uh, the name doesn't matter overall the algorithm is the same uh, definitely play around with this uh, there is no like right or wrong in this there's always a choice of work what you're working on like for example for me it always depends on what kind of project I'm working on if I'm limited by the polygons I'll definitely go for the bump map if I'm not limited by polygons or you can say I want to save my render times I'll go with uh, bump map but if I'm not concerned with my polygons or you can say render times I just want a good nice looking renders I'll definitely go with displacement map since the displacement map actually creates a displacement and displaces your geometry and creates a pretty good result. So whatever works for me. So have fun with this and practice how you can get a good result with displacement and height map. And you can also make a combination of both and I highly suggest doing this. For example, if I have a wine, uh, what you can do is you can go to Arnold and uh, let's take AI noise again and you can actually create uh, both the noise. Let me just close the Arnold render viewer. So you can actually create both the noise and attach both the you can say samples or images to both the areas. For example, right now I'm connecting my map AI noise map to the displacement, but I can control D this. I duplicate this and simply take a Arnold and a bump node to create even better result and the combination of these two will actually help you create a pretty nice uh, sorry I have to get a pretty nice result so attaching this with the, a bump node where you're creating a displacement and a bump at the same time will actually give you a pretty good result uh, actual displacement with a little bit of fake depth as well uh, so yeah so as you can see we have a pretty nice looking wine glass so play around with this and there's also one thing called as a normal map which i planned for another video which is basically the direction of light uh, but for this video I've, I've been planning for a while now because displacement and bump map are pretty like a well-known questions how to use them or like pretty are people are pretty confused with them like when to use them which is better which is right and pretty much there is no right or wrong so I hope you like the video, enjoy creating something out of this and experiment as much as you can because experimenting will help you to understand these two different types of tools better. So if you do create something out of it, definitely send me on Instagram. I love to see your work and have a good day.